Hello, I'm FGX Toy Cat, and one of the few things the Minecraft community can agree on is the fact that Minecraft with RTX on looks absolutely wild. This is why you've seen so many videos showcasing it, and that's why when I was approached by NVIDIA and CyberPower to make a video with RTX, I was considering using it to show off some big worlds you might have seen from videos, or indeed some of the weird edges of Minecraft, like the Far Lands, but with RTX turned on. But instead, I figured the best way to show you the full game would be to beat it in its entirety, and that is precisely what I'm going to be doing today. So this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Cyber Power, and in exchange, all they wanted me to tell you was that this is played on a GeForce RTX GPU using the Minecraft RTX Beta, which you can install by going to the Xbox Insider Hub and then hitting the RTX Beta option from there. And obviously, if you don't have an RTX gaming card, you can get one from Cyber Power because they build their PCs all in-house with a specialist team of engineers. Cyber Power UK are one of the UK's leading gaming PC providers, and you can check out their range of GeForce RTX systems ready for you to experience Minecraft RTX at the link in the description. So that was the sponsored messaging, which means we can now dive straight into a Minecraft run with RTX turned on. Because let's be entirely honest, although lots of people are going to be able to look at their great builds of RTX, most people play Minecraft by playing survival, so this is what your normal experience will look like, although I think normal isn't the word you can use when you're looking at a world this beautiful, but this is what Minecraft looks like with RTX. Now let's see how long it takes us to beat the game. Just for reference here, I'm using a seed that I found for 1.14 speedrunning, so there's a little bit of familiarity here, but it's still beautiful to see all the changes that have been made, and like every single mob uh, looks just wondrous in the sunlight and the sunbeams we're seeing. It's super nice, but we have to focus on turning this wood into some stone, so let's do that quickly. Oh, we found our first ores of the day, and my god, are they looking good. I mean, uh, most, most ores and most of the things you'll see using RTX will have this kind of glowing ore effect, and not without good reason. It looks super nice, too, and seeing the lights slowly fade out of areas where it's not there, that is far more complex than Minecraft's current lighting engine can do, and that's what makes RTX so great, in my opinion, but no time to... Uh, dilly dally on it. Instead, we must be making a furnace because we need some iron tools if we go into the nether. Oh god, look at the grass. No, focus on the game. Focus on the game. <laughs> okay, it's a little hard to focus on the game sometimes with just all this stuff going on, but we're gonna try our very best to do precisely that anyway. Like, seriously here, you can see how as the sun moves through the sky, the light affects the Minecraft world very slightly differently, so it's slowly moving down the blocks as our, uh, you know, furnace fuel slowly turns into iron. The lighting engine is absolutely ridiculous, and that's why it requires RTX cards, which admittedly, uh, you know, like something like 10% of Minecraft Bedrock players are going to have access to. That's something you always have to admit when you're doing something like this. But for those 10% of players, or anyone willing to pick up a card to become one of them, uh, the beauty here is absolutely <laughs> beyond reproach, right? Speaking of things beyond reproach, getting flint is always a little bit of a knowing one. We need three of that for any self-respecting Minecraft run. One, of course, is to make a flint and steel, and two is to make a fletching table, because we want to trade with some fletching villagers. So, one of the meanest parts of this run is we have to light animals on fire. I want to see how they look while they're on fire, though. Oh, god, look at the beauty here. Um, the, the lighting doesn't seem to affect too much mobs on fire, but even then, the, the environment they're in really does change. The mobs running around on fire because you might have accidentally committed arse against an animal, and my god, is it worth it? Oh, look at the look at the beauty of the blocks around the fire. They really they really get more and more uh, interesting. You can see that right there. Something I'll definitely just admit right now, I'm very excited for is riding a boat on the ocean to get to our nearest lava. Uh, pit, which is obviously an important thing to do, and I'm just excited to see like how this boat looks on the open water Because one of the things where you know one of the areas where Minecraft's lighting engine kind of falls lackluster And where RTX really picks up the slack is in the ocean Look at this right here Look at the beauty of me just sailing across an ocean and seeing the reflectiveness of the you know again right now Water is either you know you can see it or you can't now There's not only reflections, but there's also refractions like stuff looks uh, you know like it would in real life slightly different distance away than it actually is and you can see water actually looking like water in the real world in a way that's realistic in some <laughs> just beautiful, beautiful ways. You could say it's annoying and you might be right in certain ways, but you wouldn't be right if you said it wasn't beautiful, right? Now we make ourselves a nether portal using some water just like so. Again, look at the water. Like, it's easy to spot when it's on the ocean, but even when you're making a nether portal, seeing the water slowly turn into obsidian like this, it really, really, really has an impact on your Minecraft experience, I'm going to say. And um, although it's slightly harder to be 100% sure that we're placing the obsidian in the right place, because again, it's fully transparent, it's even mildly refracting, which in this case makes me hope that that's the right block to place right there. But you can see like everything has changed in a way that is absolutely stunning and crazy to look at. But now we can pick up the water, we can see that in the midst of that, we made ourselves a nether portal. 
This is a Minecraft pro tip, everyone should know if you don't already, but we're gonna use it and go to the Nether. Because the Nether is something that is usually not recommended to be shown off as part of RTX videos, but I might have got an exception where I can use it as part of mine. So here you can see, this is the Nether. Right now, it's not perfectly optimized for RTX, but even with just the very rough pass that's been done, you can see how like, yeah, this looks great. Look at the look at the lava beams you can see in the distance, so bright above everything else, because that's what lava beams would be like. It's beams of lava, of course you can see them. So I do want to know how lighting's actually handled inside the Nev Fortress, and I guess I'm about to find out as we stay off fast with a skeleton, or hopefully not get slain by one. Uh, so just like this, let's whack that with a skeleton to death. Oh, get whacked to death. That's also a possibility. So the pro tip with dying in the nether is to make sure that ghasts don't destroy all of your stuff. There are a few sources of explosion here, and if you let any of them get you, you'll not only lose your life, but you'll lose your stuff too. And no one wants to lose that, I hope. If you want to lose your life, this is the wrong video for you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. Okay, we're in. All we have to do now is not mess up two of the skeletons again, and we'll be great. But yeah, you can see how the lighting in this is really affected by those fences, which usually, you know, Minecraft's light engine just seeds them as uh, transparent blocks, but the RTX engine is really letting in an amount of light that makes sense given this fence post directly to these big lava beams. You can see it radiating on the side of these blocks right here. It's super fascinating, but let's go ahead and let's look through some more of this, because we need blaze rods as well as uh, not dying by whip skeletons. As always, an important thing. And yeah, when the blazes fire at you, you can see they really have much more vibrant attacks now. It's not just Minecraft fire that you're watching out for, it's the real fire they're spewing, which they normally do, which makes this glowing aura that, again, would make sense in real life. Fire is fascinating in real life and very few games can do it justice like you can see here in RTX. We're also gonna grab a saddle just in case we find a horse later. And indeed, another flint and steel and some gold horse armor for that horse that I really hope we're getting now. But yeah, it really is hard not to get distracted in these places by the amount of variance you can see in the lighting from block to block. And not just it is lit up or it is not lit up, but by the colors that it's reflecting from all the other surface. The, the thing that RTX actually is, if you're curious like why ray tracing is such a big deal, is because they follow every individual ray of light so that they can accurately simulate light, not just in the abstract, but in terms of every individual, uh, you know, color being reflected in the amounts that it deserves. That's why this um, version has a few weird bugs. You might see, like, uh, my hand is being, like, accurately represented in the world, so it, like, goes through things sometimes, like this, in a weird way. Um, that's because it's doing all of that, and uh, that's what it's focused on. But anyway, we got our blaze powder. We can get out of here now. In fact, we'll mine the spawner, because who doesn't want some free XP? It feels too soon to leave, but we've got to get out of here as soon as we can. We've got to ignore the beauties of the Nether, even though it doesn't have the Nether update yet, because uh, when RTX officially comes out, it'll be for the final version of Minecraft, so that's why there's no Nether update features here, just in case you're curious, because it is a beta. But yeah, let's hop through the Nether. Let's go back to the Earth world, and let's get some trading done, because this is the 1.14 strategy, which means some trading is in order. Also, Oh my god, this night time. Again, night time is usually an ugly time in Minecraft. Here, with some lava and some water and some night time around, you can see how it's actually very much the opposite of that. Even the desert temple is easily uh, visible from the background. Although, just to mention, it isn't meant to glow in normal Minecraft. It glows because this is a texture pack using RTX. Right now, if you want to use RTX, you have to use one of the uh, uh, texture packs which uh, Nvidia and uh, thingy have put together. So just keep that in mind that in this texture pack, uh, Terracotta is a seriously glowy block. It's the Neon District one. So it's meant to be super neon -y, and my god, let me tell you, it is. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this is not what it's meant to look like inside a desert temple, but I kind of dig it, right? I kind of like it. I mean, wait, wait, wait. I kind of dig it, right? Haha, -ha, it's very funny. But yeah, the, the, the strange beauty that we get from inside here isn't natural, but I can't lie and say I don't like it. But seriously, if you look at the front of the desert temple, because it's right in front of some water, you can see how the rays are all being reflected from each of these into the water, and then they're hitting me at the accurate angle and accurate position that they actually would, making these gorgeous, lifelike, um, you know, reflections in the water. I love it. Also, look at these reflections of zombies in the water. They definitely are just zombies in water and not a thing that can hurt me here on land, right? That's how that one works. But yeah, same with the lighting from the village. Again, a lot of, um, you know, like uh, games will try to pre-render this sort of an effect, but this is actually being rendered on the fly, having the light from inside of those houses go outside of it as it accurately would. It's super bright in here because there's a torch in here, but that, that lightness shouldn't leave immediately, but yeah, it should be visible from the outside. It's a really hard thing for any lighting engine to do. What is with this villager? But it's a really hard thing for any lighting engine to do, but I feel like this one does it in a really, really solid way. 
Which is why in the mornings when there's a literal sun over there, everything is very bright. You can see it very well. In fact, I would argue too well. I could, I, I would argue you can see too much right now. But maybe that's just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Iron Golem's got that one covered. Even the mobs have accurate shadows based on the sun's position. So because it's morning, their, their shadows are super long as they would be because the sun's facing from that way. And in the middle of the day, their shadows are shorter. Right now, Minecraft just puts this black circle under something, calls it a day with a shadow. But this has shadows on everything in the world. It's crazy to look at when you think about it. Even when the fire is competing with another light source like it is right now, you can see how there's a real beauty to it, which is hard to do in any other game. So as we come up on that pillar drought post, let me show you the water experience, not just from on top of it, but from the inside of it. Because again, this is base game survival Minecraft. Look how everything looks in here. Again, you can see the surface, or surface of it, but refract it, uh, refract it. You can see the surface of the water, but it's refracted as it naturally should be until you kept to the surface. Uh, and then you can see like, oh yeah, there's this kind of weird reflection where everything on the surface is duplicated. It looks beautiful in a way that again, they put a lot of attention to detail in and I love seeing it every single time I get the opportunity to. Speaking of things I love the opportunity to do, killing pillagers is gonna be important for this run. We need to get a crossbow and we could obviously trade for a regular bow, but it's much easier just to find a nice pillager like this. Uh, kill him until he gives me a crossbow. And if we're still unlucky enough not to get one from these, oh, guys. Okay, we got one. It's good. A level of detail I didn't actually know about until just now is that you can even see the shadows are simulating the weapon. So you can see that shadow accurately represents the crossbow in the pillager's hand. That is intense detail, although we have to kill the pillager before he kills me. But seriously, the shadows, they're impressive in this. If I'm being entirely honest with you though, even though I find shadows to be really impressive and I love the way they technically can get to work, there, there's something that I always think is weird when people like compliment too highly, because I never look at a shadow and go, yes, this is why I need a high-end gaming PC. I care about getting, you know, good frames. I care about getting, uh, you know, an experience that looks good and is interesting, uh, much more than I care about uh, that sort of stuff. But anyway, we're in the village now. We're gonna start breaking some of these things. You can see how this village contains terracotta, so it's super glowy in places. Again, it's just the texture pack. It's a weird thing. But you've got to admit, it's kind of cool to chill inside this bright red house. Oh man, this house is intently yellow too. I don't know what the deal is with glowing houses. I guess in the savannah biome, they just make the houses out of terracotta sometimes. And it's a very bizarre experience, let me tell you. But yeah, inside any house, inside any structure is always going to be a very nice experience. This is why they want to show that off whenever they're on YouTube. But again, most of Minecraft in my experience is spent outside, which is what this video will be going through. Because now we've got to trade some villagers. This is the old 1.14 strategy that's the fastest way to get to the nether, uh, or rather to get to the end. So we need to find a villager who's willing to sell me ender pearls. In this case though, that means just getting rid of every other job site in the village until there is only one job that the villager can take left, and that should be this guy right here becoming a, um, a cleric, I think. Nope, he's become a farmer. The right type of farmer, but the wrong type of right type of farmer. There we go, here's the guy. Look at him, he's a cleric, which means now he'll eventually sell me enderpearls if we just buy enough garbage from him, which we're gonna have to do right now. So buy wheat from this man, and then use the proceeds from that to buy redstone, which we don't intend to use from this guy, so we can buy some lapis, which we don't intend to use from this guy, so we can trade some gold we don't need from this guy, so we can eventually buy some ender pearls we do need from him instead. So I know this is a pretty intimate question, you know, for people that I don't necessarily know so well in some cases, but if you're new around here, one, subscribe, two thirds of you don't do it, wow, and two, this sunset is beautiful, right? Don't you feel like we've made a magical bond watching the sunset in RTX, seeing the world slowly shift from brightly colored to this kind of nice red glow as the sun slowly exits. No, should we get back to Minecraft? Yeah, guess who finally got themselves a horse? I threw away the horse armor because I didn't think I need it. Isn't the dream that we all have to ride a Minecraft horse that goes very slightly faster than walking between Minecraft villages, seeing it bob its head back and forth into the individual rays beams of light? I mean, that's all I want in this world. And if you want different things, then you are wrong. Okay, something we have to give credit to RTX for is not making rain look awful. You can see how it's raining uh, here very loosely, but it still doesn't look so bad. That is a real accomplishment. Rain is the worst thing about Minecraft, and to see it not ruin my not to not ruin the game as a whole, that is honestly something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. Although it's ruining my attempt to get cooked food. Am I gonna have to use a furnace? I can't go back to that, man. I can't go back to furnacing it the old way. 
By the way, I only just now realized that I got a crossbow with this much durability. I, I think that's like, what, like one single arrow, and then it's gonna go bust. Wait, two, three arrows, maybe? So we get three arrows, four arrows, five arrows, six arrows. You know, if I didn't spend so much time testing how long this crossbow would last, I would have got myself a solid nine arrows before I would have done so. So. Turns out, just because it looks like it has no durability, you can see the the bar is empty. Uh, just because it looks that way doesn't mean it is, because we've got a now 15 hours from this thing that shows no sign of breaking. But let's pretend that wasn't true, and let's just craft ourselves a normal bow already, shall we? A small bit of villager trading later, and now we can go with ender poles and hand down to the stronghold. We need eight ender poles for the stronghold to work, but I believe there are ender poles in some chests. It's probably, we'll just pray that the stronghold has an eighth one. If it doesn't, we'll have to embarrassingly come back up here. And yeah, let's show you what mining looks like in uh, RTX, because obviously lighting looks great when there's a lot of lighting around, but how does lighting look in low light situations? I mean, you can't always rely on there to be some iron ore or some diamonds or some gold around the place, right? So how does it look when you're in a dark cave with nothing around you? Or even, uh, let's let's say a step worse, right? Let's take one of these blocks um, right here and let's put this above us so it's pure darkness. How does it look then? And the answer is, it looks like nothing. You can see literally zero with this on. I wonder if this is something, this is one of those key areas for improvement, right? Like when you're breaking, you can see the particles and you can see pretty much nothing else. Like even my pickaxe, you can see it's just a gap on the particle effect. It's nothing, oh, okay. That's why I don't mind down there apparently. You can see literally nothing else. It's kind of crazy, right? But yeah, this is what the end portal looks like. One of the most important parts of Minecraft looks amazing because again, having lava around here doesn't mean too much unless that lava is as significant as it needs to be. And boy, does the lava in the uh, end portal room really light up. But again, if we go outside of this room and we start mining out again, you'll see how it literally looks like nothing up there because there is nothing we can see until that one block, which even then we can only vaguely see if we stare at it for long enough. The stronghold itself though is a great example of how Minecraft does look because these strongholds are lit up very sparsely in ways that actually look pretty creepy after this update. I mean, look at this room for instance. You can see how the chest is pretty much invisible because it's between two of these chests, making it a bit harder to see is something that actually totally makes sense in this case. And it means that you can actually be led around the stronghold by some of these lighting choices. I'm not sure where this light comes from actually. Is it the iron bars? What a... I'm, I'm so confused about that one, but let's ignore that for now. Let's instead hop down here and let's go to another entirely dark room. Try and find this, which is near me. I feel like the light's following me, but like in a very, very vague uh, broad way. But, oh, okay. There's a zombie around here somewhere, but I can't see where. Help me. Help me. <laughs> okay. So I'm fighting a zombie right now that I cannot see because I'm in a no night light room. I'm just following the noises and we pray that he dies. He did. Okay. So... That was scary, and that is a thing that happens. That is why you need torches, at least right now, with this current RTX build. Or, even better, you bring flint and steel. I don't think I can overexpress how important and beautiful it is when you finally light up an area with nothing in it, and even how horrifying it is when, if you do use a flint and steel, obviously that fire will eventually go out, unless you're doing it on Nivrak, which means that we can see things right now. Thank God this room has some light. It's really far away from the chests, but still, I'll totally take it. I'm starting to get a bit worried that we're not going to find this last ender pearl in here. Oh, thank God it was in the very last one. I was, was very worried till just the end there. They really had me going, I will say. Okay, so now we need to get back up to the end portal room. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to mine just straight up from here. And we're going to pray that it works. Always a good strategy in Minecraft. Oh, yeah, you can see when you've hit a room with some light in. It's very clear when that's happened, right? So now we make some Eyes of Enders. Now we place those into each of the portal frames. And I'm really curious to see actually what the end portal itself will look like. So let's see what that is. So from underneath, you can't ever see the end portal, but from above, it looks like stone bricks, question mark. Oh, it's reflected. It's using this as a surface. I wonder why, like, I don't think that's part of the default pack. I think they deliberately made the end portals reflective. I wonder if there's any value in doing that. Huh, very strange stuff, honestly. But let's go into the end, let's fight the dragon, shall we? And let's get this one going. So yeah, the light here is astounding. I really feel like this holds up to the um, dimension's initial plan, because obviously if you don't know, this was originally intended to be a dimension 
uh, for the uh, you know the Aether. It's based on the Aether's generation. That's why it's floating islands above nothing. Fun fact, now you know. And man, the light here really reflects how that should have looked in a way. Um, in a really good way, I would say. Oh god, watch out for that. So I hope it goes without saying that I really desperately need to avoid being hit by the dragon. And obviously we also need to take down all the towers. So step one is going to be going for these corner towers. The cage is on them. And not dying. Although, maybe that second part of that task is a little harder than the first. Oh god, you can see the dragon shadow before you can see the dragon. Okay, I totally died and it sucks. And also, there's still invisible end acid in this version. It hasn't been fixed just yet. So we have to run around the end praying we don't run into that. But again, uh, this is a key thing. We just need to, right now, focus on getting up to this tower and not dying to the dragon. Which is always easier said than done. You know, we use gravel to get up here. Because if the dragon destroys the gravel tower, oh no. What a tragedy that would be. Okay, that's the tower gone. Oh, and that's the dragon very mad about it. Let's take down some more towers. Nice and simple. Always easy to pick a tower to come to the top up on bedrock because you have to use one of these two. And yeah, let's keep away from the dragon and indeed her acid breath attacks. Now we've got a bridge over to the second tower from this first one without being knocked off by the dragon, which is a surprisingly hard task. You would not, uh, you know, quite believe it. I'm going to be honest with you right here. And then we have to mine through this uh, tower as well. Oh my god, I jumped at just the right moment. I, I thought that might happen and I didn't want to flex about it, but like, oh my god, I jumped just knowing the dragon was behind me. Again, that sound uh, visual design combination, knowing uh, the shadows, etc., can really, really, really actually improve your Minecraft experience if you don't set yourself on fire. You know, all the skill points that I just showed off, they're immediately gone after I set myself on fire <laughs> just afterwards. But yeah, we got all of the towers down after this one, I think. Actually, I think there's that one over there. I think it's probably lit. It just is outside my radius. Oh, we hit the dragon by accident. Heck yeah. Works for me. And now we want to hop down here, which requires a water bucket. Just uh, casually place that down. Look at the beauty, but don't get distracted by the beauty because we have to still defeat the dragon though. Oh god, that's crazy. And let's go slay the dragon. It's not often we have a low stress opportunity to kill the dragon, and this is definitely one of those. It's weird because the dragon model is exactly the same, but even just the same model lit better looks significantly greater. Have a couple rounds and shoot it. Dead. Just to be safe, we'll leave the golden apple. I mean, we have two of them. It seems like a waste if we don't use them before the fight's over. And now we look at the dragon in third person. Again, same textures, same details, but otherwise just looks so much better. Oh god, that was a win. Okay, let's go. I don't want to be rude to the dragon. I know she has a whole life of her own that maybe she wants to deal with. But, you know, down here, we've got a fight we need to finish. And I'd like it if she could come down and let me do precisely that. Honestly, the dragon's always felt like a bit of a weird, outdated fight in Minecraft. The fact that you have to wait for her to come and let you attack her. It just it just feels like a really old style Minecraft, a really old style video game. Then maybe it's going for that kind of like phase effect thing. But then why have a health bar at all? Why not just let you attack her thrice in the underbelly or something? Maybe I'm thinking about it too much. Maybe we should just be happy. We killed the dragon, and we didn't just kill the dragon anyway. We killed the dragon with on the X turned on. Or actually, wait. You know, what? I don't want to confirm that one just yet. Okay, there we go. We didn't just kill the dragon. We killed the dragon with RTX turned on. Yeah, look at that beauty. Oh, oh, and there we go. <laughs> so this is what the end portal looks like. Oh, it's reflective too, but like shaky reflect. How do they even pull off this effect? It's really, really nice. But anyway, that is Minecraft Beaten. Minecraft. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's meant to roll the end credits, but it doesn't want to. It's just, it is done with that today. Well, good beta. Good beta. So, thank you very much for watching this video, where I beat Minecraft to show you all the different elements in, in, the, in the game. Because if we're being honest, a normal survival game and, uh, you know, a Minecraft map, they're not the same thing. Not everyone plays Minecraft by playing marketplace maps. In fact, 98% of you don't play Minecraft that way. And as a result, it is much more telling to see something like that. That's why I agreed to this sponsored video deal, because I want to show you what RTX actually looks like. And thank you very much to NVIDIA and to CyberPow for making this video happen. Again, you can click the link down below if you want to pick up a CyberPow PC with RTX in, so you can do this exact same thing. Um, if you already have an RTX card, though, you can already get the beta. It's nice. It's wonderful. And thank you 
you to everyone who watched this video uh, because you allow these sorts of things to happen. Because without all of you, let's be honest, deals like this would be a lot harder to make happen and who doesn't like making deals that make the money and also have a fun time beating Minecraft. But just in case you feel like this whole thing is tainted by the sponsored thing, maybe what you enjoy instead is the fact that you can check out me beating three Minecraft bosses, no raid, just the Guardian, the Wither and the Ender Dragon. For some reason the leaderboard doesn't have four bosses, but whatever, we'll be doing that tonight. You can find a link to that if you go to my Twitter, and if you check the description, you can find a link to a CyberPower PC if you want to do something like we did in this video here today. Thank you to the sponsors, and thank you to everyone watching, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.